guys, Youngblood with you, and what we're doing today is a should you buy video on the brand new Anvil Hurricane that was just released for sale that's going to be going on through March 6th. Now the ship is available for sale at $175 if you're using credits or purchasing like a CCU. Um, it is an available in a Warbond edition if you're paying cash for $160. Additionally, you do have the option to get this as a part of two different packs. One is kind of like a uh, fleet pack with a bunch of different options. The other is with a Terrapin, um, but you can go check that out if you like. Now, the tagline on this ship is Big Guns, Small Ship, and uh, some of the pilots that actually used it nicknamed it the Six Shooter since it's a pretty small ship and it has six guns. Now, the design here is actually an older model. It was uh, designed during the Second Teveran War to deal damage against the uh, Teveran ships that had the really impressive uh, phalanx shields on them. Um, so they had needed something that could come out and do a lot of damage. Now, the ship is really going to balance things out. It compensates for being a utilitarian design with powerful weapons, and there's six of them. Uh, it comes stock with six broadswords, with two being gimbaled on the nose, meaning that um, you, know, you have two size fours as a possibility. Basically, you could bring two combines along if you don't mind using fixed weapons. And then you have four more broadswords on the size three turret spots. Now, with that being size three, those are obviously not going to be able to become size four weapons on a size three mount. Um, in addition, it brings four missiles along in uh, size three missile pylons. Now, things that we need to consider here. Um, they're very cautious when they're doing the description of the ship and saying things like it's not a ship for beginners. Um, you know, it's got um, big weapons, not very much armor, and you need to be a good pilot and actually have good aim. So if you're just learning to dogfight, getting into a ship like this may be a poor decision. Um, one of the phrases that they actually, or one of the quotes they used in the article was, if you're caught looking to blast a target out of the solar system, um, the hurricane gets the job done. Just don't get caught flying solo. I think that says a lot. You know, the ship is bringing a lot of offensive capability without much defense capability on its own. It seems more like a support ship um, if in a combat role than anything really that you're going to just take out solo. Now, you're going to be able to deal a ton of damage, um, you know, with this ship. Um, but you're going to have to actually be able to land your shots. But it is going to find itself in trouble when you're matched up with faster ships like Interceptor. So things like the Gladius and the M50 and the 350R and the uh, Car 2 all uh, Maybe even things like the Sabre, you know, kind of the mid-ground ships, you know, like a Buccaneer, for example. Those are going to be ships you have to really be careful of. Now, luckily, you do have a man turret, so you get a little bit better coverage um, in this ship. But you're not very durable, and there's no defense on the bottom. So if somebody's able to get into a good spot and stay there, you're going to be toast. Um, as far as when we're expecting to see this ship actually be ready, they said that it should be flight ready by the end of the year. Uh, and until that time comes, you're going to have the Super Hornet as a loner ship. So this ship doesn't have an interior. Um, basically, it looks like you're accessing the ship like the Gladiator, where the two seats are going to drop out the bottom of the ship. And they say that this design um, is an actual decision that's made so you can ac get into the action quickly, basically jumping in there and you're straight into the ship instead of having to traverse your way to the cockpit. Um, the brochure actually said that this was supposed to be the uh, design inspiration for the Gladiator. Now, as far as some other stats outside of the weapons are concerned, the ship weighs in at uh, 15,500 kilograms, um, which is about halfway between something like a uh, M50 and a Hornet. Um, and it's 22 meters long, which is about the same size as a Hornet, uh, with seating for two, um, with one being the pilot and the other being the turret gunner. Now, according to the information page, it has 10 size 1 maneuvering thrusters. But the weird thing here was that they were broken into two different categories, with 8 showing and then 2 showing in a different category. I think that was actually a mistake, if I had to guess. Um, so I'm personally going to count on this ship having 8 maneuvering thrusters. Um, the primary engine on this ship is only a single size 2. So if we compare that information, um, you know, a Hornet is heavier, 22,000 kilograms, has a single size 4 engine, so twice as big, and 8 TR2 maneuvering thrusters. That means the Hurricane, even though it weighs less, is in all likelihood going to be slower, less maneuverable, and less durable than the Hornet line. Now considering the Hornet isn't all that fast or agile, that's kind of a scary thought. Now speaking of durability, we already know that it doesn't have great armor, but it also only carries two size 1 shields. Again, compare that to a Hornet, it has a single size 4. Now, a nice little perk that comes with the ship is it does come with the jump engine. So with those numbers out of the way, let's talk about like who this may be right for. Um, I think for those of you who value big weapons more than anything, it makes a lot of sense. Because having two combines on the front of a fighter is crazy, especially when the other four weapons are size 3 broadswords. That's pretty damn good. Think about putting four tarantulas on there as well. Those are size 3s and could do the exact same thing. Um, for those of you who are really confident in your aiming ability, um, you know, having 
six size three gimbaled weapons, I think mouse and keyboard players are probably going to be people that are really good with this ship. You need to hit your target, and a mouse says, then I'm going to hit my target. Um, those of you that have good situational awareness to when you're taking damage. If you're playing Arena Commander today and you don't know that you're taking damage, being in a ship that's no notably slow and not durable would be a bad situation for you. Now, hopefully, we're going to get changes to the damage notification system, and we're going to have better um, input later on. Um, but for today, I would say if you don't know when you're being attacked, don't get this ship. Um, those of you who don't mind bringing a second person with you for max effectiveness until we get the ability to slave turrets to the pilot may have interest here as well. So, you know, if you... Here's the deal. If you take this ship out, and you even when we get the ability, if you slave the turrets to your controls as the pilot, you're really pretty much limited to forward-facing weaponry. And you're in a slow, not durable ship. So if you get somebody behind you and you're not able to maneuver into a situation where you can bring your guns to bear, um, you're going to be in trouble. So you really almost are going to be better off having a second person in this ship controlling the turret for you um, because it's going to give you a greater range of motion. So that's something you probably want to consider. Um, those of you out there who like to play as part of a fleet or a convoy and want to add a bit of a deterrent to punch above your weight class, this could be a good option for that. Um, you know, the bigger weaponry on this ship means that it should be able to deal with larger threats. Um, again, larger threats typically have larger weapons, though, so if you're not fast enough to evade them or agile enough to avoid those shots, you're probably going to be killed at some point there. But it does give you some options. So, you know, for example, if you primarily are bringing lighter ships along, like M50s and Gladiuses for your escorts, you could bring this in addition just to deal with the bigger threats, while the smaller ships that you're with you could maybe kind of help protect you in that situation. Now, who is this ship not right for? Well, the ship sort of lives between a gunboat and a fighter. So if you already have something like a Redeemer as well as another fighter option, this may end up adding a little bit of redundancy into your fleet. You know, if you, so, you know, if you want to bring as many guns as possible to the fight, you're going to take the Redeemer. If you want to take something that's going to be a little bit more agile, you're probably going to take along your fighter. Um, how many situations are there going to be when you need that thing that's right in the middle of the two? So, um, again, yeah, that's something I would mull around in your head before you make your purchasing decision. Um, if you're someone who values speed and agility to avoid fire um, or the ability to get on someone's tail to let you take them down that way, then this ship is not the ship for you. Um, if you fly a slower ship like the Vanguard or the Aurora today and hate how they handle, this ship is probably not going to be your best bet because it's probably going to be something along those lines. If you want to do anything other than combat, this ship is way too combat focused for you to take on any other role. So there you have it. Um, I think the ship is really cool. I think it's an interesting idea. It is the definition of a glass cannon. It's probably the first ship where they've said it's a glass cannon that actually comes out looking like a glass cannon. Um, as far as the overall durability goes, we'll have to see how it performs. As far as the maneuvering and agility goes, we'll have to see how it performs. The good news is, is they say they're going to do their two Q&A sessions on this next week, um, which we'll make sure that we cover in a lot of detail. But as far as the ship goes, I like the design. I kind of like the play style information on it. So as far as if it's going to end up in my fleet yet, I'm a little bit undecided because I'm in that category of being stocked up on fighters pretty well, and I have the Redeemer. So I need to kick it around a little bit. So um, if you guys have questions on this, please let me know. I'd love to see what your opinions are and if the ship is worth your money. So stay tuned for more content coming soon. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day. Take care.